Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another RK's voice acting. This one was hard to put together. When I do these videos, I want to bring in more than just voices. I want to give you a taste of their careers, without delving into their personal lives. I wanted to bring the voice of Cup in Season 3 of the Transformers into the spotlight. Which I'll do, don't you worry. But his actor, John Stevenson, never gave any interviews. You can imagine that finding a bit of information outside brief online bios was hard, but I did find a few things. Let's take a quick look at John's debut and explore some of his most famous roles. Born on August 9, 1923 in Kenosha, Wisconsin, John Stevenson went to Ripon College and participated in the campus drama department. John wanted to be a lawyer at first and studied at the University of Wisconsin Law School. But after serving in the Air Force as a gunner and radio operator during World War II, John went to Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois instead. During his studies, he gained an acting role on an episode of a drama radio series on WBKB. So instead, John graduated with a master's degree in speech and drama in 1948. Early in his career, he did a lot of guest starring roles on camera. For major shows such as I Love Lucy, the Johnny Carson show where he did a super serious news break announcer sketch alongside Johnny Carson from 1955 to 1956, and Bonanza. He also appeared in three episodes of Perry Mason, three episodes of the Beverly Hillbillies, and eight episodes of Hogan's Heroes. For those three shows, he played a different character each time. John also guest starred in popular shows such as The Lone Ranger and The Man From Uncle, and got a recurring role as Roger Crotcher on The People's Choice. John did a lot of commercial voiceover, and that experience was well received when he started working for Hanna Barbera. As he tells it, when animation voiceover started, the studios didn't know exactly how to produce all the voice work, so they relied on the experience of radio commercial voice artists, who by trade would sometimes play two or three characters in the same commercial. So instead of casting a different actor for each role, you only had to hire a few to simplify a recording session. This is how the rule of three voice for the price of one came about in the animation industry. Anna Barbera would ask for two things, make it loud, because since they were paying for it they wanted to hear it, and lean heavily on impressions. John hadn't tried impressions, but when he did, it opened many new voices for him. Even if the impressions were bad, it was something he could use. That being said, let's take a look at his career and see how he used those newfound voices. Before John worked on our favorite short Transformers, he worked on a show that would become an icon of animation, The Flintstones. Doing a couple of guest characters, he eventually landed the role of Mr. Slate, potentially his most known character. He reprised this role until 2001 for the TV movie The Flintstones on the Rocks. That's a role he would reprise 14 times, plus one time for the video game The Flintstone Bedrock Bowling and a Cocoa Pebble commercial. On the original show, he also did 14 other characters for a total of 20 characters throughout the years. In the 60s, you heard him 34 times on the show Top Cat, doing various guest characters, and on the show Johnny Quest, he was Dr. Benton Sequest. On the show Space Ghost, he was Dog, a role he would reprise on the show The Mighty Might Or, and adding Pondo, Ark, and Bellow to his repertoire. He did a few characters on shows such as Birdman, Wacky Race, and The Adventures of Gulliver, to eventually lend his voice to seven characters on Scooby-Doo Where Are You, ten more on Help It's the Hair Bear Bunch when the 70s arrived, and would follow with 29 characters on the new Scooby-Doo movies. Then he would jump on the Yogi franchise, obtaining the role of Doggy Daddy, which he reprised 11 times throughout his career. You heard him in the movie Charlotte's Web when he played John Arable, or 35 new characters on the Scooby-Doo show in 1976. He played Dory, the Great Goblin, and Bard in The Hobbit, the 1977 cartoon movie adaptation, and also was the Witch King in The Return of the King. On 1978 The Fantastic Four, he played Doctor Doom, Magneto, and Karnak. And on Casper and the Angels, he was Harry Scary a role he would reprise in Casper's First Christmas. In the 80s, fans of Spider-Man and his amazing friends will remember him for his portrayal of Colossus, Thunderbird, Doctor Strange, Ymir, Shocker, and Loki, while some of you will know him as Chief Quimby on Inspector Gadget. 
Then we hit the jackpot in 1984 where he would play a very important part of our childhood on the Transformers. In season one, you heard him as the impulsive wind charger. We'll let you play kick the can with what's left of Megatron and his merry machine. The pessimistic huffer. I'd have thought he'd be dinosaured out after his experience on Dinobot Island. Dr. Alcazar. Our antimatter formula may be top secret, but without Chip's help, it would be a mystery to us as well. And the loyal Thundercracker. You know, Skywarp, I can't wait to get back to Cybertron. Earth's so flat. Season 2 would have him reprise those roles and add the wise Alpha Tryon. Hmm, she used her special power. I warned her not to. The bounty hunter Defcon. Great Cybertron, an Autobot. And the gambler Bosch, a role he mentioned at BotCon 2001 that he really enjoyed. If we could only get to Monarchus, we could win stacks of Energon chips. Unfortunately, none of those characters had a speaking line in the movie. But in season three, it took over the role of Cup from Lionel Stander. Same thing happened to Optimus Prime after the Matrix was passed to him. Optimus learned to live with his Geary and respect it. Following the Transformers, you heard him as General Hawk, General Flag and General Franks on G.I. Joe, a real American hero. On top of doing guest characters on various shows, he was cast as Professor Charles Xavier in the TV pilot Pride of the X-Men. This is Cerebral, a powerful computer with a special circuit which can detect the unique brain waves emitted by mutants. During the 90s, he kept working and gave life to many characters on Tailspin, Rugrats, and the movie Little Nemo. But he mainly reprised his roles of Mr. Slate and Doggy Daddy in existing franchise, but did work on some new shows like Ah! Real Monsters and Dog Dodgers. His final role was the Sheriff on Scooby-Doo Abracadabra Do. Before we go, I'd like to share some of his thoughts when asked at BotCon 2001 how their work surroundings change over the years. He thinks that the heart and fun of voiceover is being taken out of the animation world with the current setup. He mentioned that one thing he resents is Disney's policy of one-line interviews. To John, you can't come up with a character voice in just one line. You need some background, a couple different tries to flesh out anything. Another point he makes was that with ensemble reads, working with everyone in the studio was fun. Now you don't work with whoever is in the episode you're recording, and the artistic approach is replaced with getting things out quickly and piecemeal together. Get in, get out, collect the check. To him, that's no fun. And this is a sentiment I've heard from other voice actors. Now do we, the consumer, notice this when we watch? I don't think most people will. But the actors themselves, they absolutely notice it. And finally, in a dark twist of fate, after giving us so many great memories, John died of Alzheimer's disease on May 15, 2015. But us fans will always treasure his iconic roles and the great fun we had listening to our beloved characters. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of John Stevenson's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really love reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care!